Hello friends, I'm so glad to be on this episode of Hunger with the Mandated Prophet. I believe you truly enjoyed God in the last discourse and in the last presentation. I've been getting a lot of calls and text messages concerning the profound impact that this teaching is having on the body of Christ and I'm eternally grateful to God who has given us such ability. Last time in this telecast, we did all scriptural ways of discerning the prophetic. We looked at biblical wisdom on how to separate a false voice and, and how to separate between a false voice and a real voice. Please, I would like you to be well seated, invite your friends, share this video and uh, tell them that we are going to have a move of God right now in this telecast and we're going to continue on the subject how to discern through prophetic. Please be blessed as you watch. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Number four, another insight to clear the summit. The prophets and leadership should be in agreement with the word of God in its interpretation and application. The leadership of the church, that is why I'm telling people the cause the, the post-COVID church is going to be a synergy of the fivefold. Days have gone for one man, fine boy, celebrity, pastor. Where everybody comes and bows and uh, everything is there. No, part of what the restructuring that God is battling the church. You know, many times I tell people, God doesn't make mistakes and he doesn't just, he doesn't just uh, you know, he, he, he don't just fold his hands and things happen. No, he's always in charge. Part of the blessings of the post-COVID church is to real, uh, the church is passing through a moment of resetting. Resetting. God is bringing us to the original order and blueprint of the church in order to prepare us for the greatest spiritually reawakening that is about to bring beyond souls harvest to the kingdom. So, this is saying, when the prophetic word comes, the leaders, the pastoral leader, the presbytery, the apostolic team, must be able to have witness that what is spoken is of the Lord. And this talks about the prophet having humility. How many prophets subject their prophecies to scrutiny? Some people get angry when the leadership says, please write, I have a culture in our ministry especially for young pastors who are growing up in the prophet, prophet ministry, before I will begin to give them public pulpit to minister, over time I say, get a pen, get a paper, and whatever God tells you, please write it and give to me. Give to me because I've been in this saddle, I've been in this, I've been in this office for getting to 20 years now. I know God. I have proven results all over. Written books. In fact, the book I have on my hand is one of my I mean, the, 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 the book is a trumpet. Just Google my name and you see. Individual prophecies. Things that were physically impossible. Prophesied and it came to pass. Some of you that are watching me that knows my pedigree, you can testify that this grace has been with me. So I'm not talking from a book I read. I am talking experientially. One of the ways to build integrity as a prophetic personality, as a prophet, is that you must trust God. Number one, to hear well. And number two, for those words to be confirmed. Okay, let me cite a typical example. During my international school of prophets and uh, leaders uh, conference, I suspect, I normally, you know, do a minister's conference. I mean, that has been running for almost 12 years now. I have a lot of pastors come across from different places and we sit under this ministry for five days learning the ways of God and demonstrating the raw power of God. And uh, I would like you that is what you just just know the month of November, I will communicate the date. It's a moment that we sit down and look deeply into the world. So uh, our theme for last year was generational shift. To be sincere with you, when the Holy Spirit gave me that theme and gave me the syllabus, I didn't fully comprehend what we're saying until coronavirus came. I remember in that conference, he gave us the new model, the changing church, the generational change, what pastors can do to remain relevant. I was oblivious of the fact that Corona is coming. He didn't tell me about Corona, but he told me what to do. And until Corona came, I now realized 
why he prepared. Remember Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, God cannot do anything except he revealed it to his servants what the prophet. If you are watching me, please go and look for that. Go on my on YouTube and search for that generational shift. Download it. It's gonna we, we, we are not surprised. Our ministry is doing well. We are connecting people because in that thing we learned that media is the future of the church. We learned that the emerging church is gonna be a job without words. We learn that there's going to be apostolic reformation where God is bringing teams. We learn that a new set of army is rising, the faceless and the nameless. We learn a lot of things. They are all there recorded. We prophesied. And bam, December, January, COVID came. And we are not surprised. We are selling. If I tell you what I and my wife have been able to produce in the last six weeks, you will shout. So because God prepared us. And Pastors that were in that conference are calling me, ah, prophet of God, look at that thing you are saying, and all that and all that. Those of them, we thought the businesses they can do, why do ministry? Now imagine that offering and tithe is what you eat. What will you do? Six weeks have gone, seven weeks have gone, and we don't know how long this will continue. Does it mean you are going to be begging your members? That is why the Bible said that wisdom is profitable to direct revelation suppress men what i know i don't know gives me dominion over you so you, you, you must build a reputation for for your world to come to pass that is why god does not neglect process for progress that is why you must be under the ministry of a mature prophet to be able to discern no matter how they say that so that uh, that um uh, uh, the man in Shiloh, what's his name again? Uh, Eli has backslidden. Yet, somewhere depended on his voice to so know the, the interpretation of real voice. You can't, you can't bypass them. You can't bypass them. Study. Because some of these things are not gotten in a day. They are not gotten in a day. You see, prophetic accuracy, precision, calling people by name and all that. It doesn't come. It's, it's possible. But God looks at your heart, looks at your motive. And then looks at your humility before he pours it. Uh, now people call me all over the world by 10 o'clock. They will call. I say, your name is this. You're coming from this. This is your problem. I prophesy miracles up without seeing them. Without seeing them. Thanks for my ministry. Enjoy international support and blessing. Because uh, uh, even COVID-19 canceled the kind of ministry I render. Because as long as I have my phone, I have ministry. Ministry is running. I hope you got my point. So we, 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 we must... Ask this question, does what he say come to pass? And if you're a young, burning prophet, don't just go in there and begin wars. Many times sit back and say, Lord, these are the things I've said. Have they come to pass? If they're coming to pass, praise God. Ask for more grace. If they're not coming, then sit down and ask God, what am I not getting right? Deuteronomy 18 verse 22. The Bible says, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, the word follow not means if the thing does not come to pass, that is the thing which the law had not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it what presumptuously thou shalt not be afraid of him. So we must be able to trust God to confirm our words. And the only secret to this is alignment. Speaking when God is speaking and keeping quiet when God is keeping quiet. Most prophets subscribe to the pressure of the people and they give soulish prophecy. My brother, if you say what God didn't say, get ready to confirm it. No amount of pressure should make you to say what God did not say. That, those are some of the pitfalls, like the one episode I did with that. These are the, some of the challenges during my growing up years. I see people come to me with tears and cry, and they say, We had a how God is using you as a prophet. You close your eyes open, nothing. You connect to the nothing is as dry as dry, dry bone. And ego sets in. Are you going to tell people to go that uh, today God is not prophet? They even wonder what kind of prophet you are. But can I tell you something? Look at me. The word of God works. Oh, you didn't hear me. The word of God works. I, can I say it again? The word of God. When the word of God is spoken under faith, it creates divine possibilities. So, if you are met with such pressure and you are not getting revelational voice of God coming to you, lay hands and pray by faith, and the prayer of faith of the righteous shall make the sick whole. That's how to operate. It, it gives you protection, it gives you security 
from being labored as a false prophet. I hope you've learned something today. Praise the Lord. Another how do I discern the genuine prophetic? Does a prophet live a godly lifestyle? What is the testimony of the prophet? I, I know some people say the gift of God is not that I'm not disputing scripture. But you see, God gave us the Holy Spirit and enabled the mind so that we will not worry him. I mean, there's a place of physical observation. If we say we are of God, then we will live like him. You don't dwell in darkness and tell me you are walking in the light. It doesn't make sense. Take your gift and stay. So, a prophet drinks alcohol, carries women, tells lies, or founded testimonies. See, no matter how accurate the person be, please run from such atmosphere. Because whatever a man says, under a wrong or you can define your destiny. That's what I'm teaching on this summit. That's what I'm teaching on judging prophecy. It's not that man, that man they see, that man they see. In the Igbo palace, they will say, that man now who's up? Sorry for those of you who are not Igbo. What I mean is that the man can see. He can prophesy. He can show you everything. Hey! There are many voices in the world, says Paul, and none of them is without what? Signification. And he said, prove all things and hold those things which are correct. So, you must watch out for the kind of life. Jeremiah 23, 13 to 16 says, And I have seen fully in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They straighten also the hands of evildoers that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with warm wood, and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profoundness gone forth into all the land. Thus said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets, and prophesy unto, that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They make you vain. They corrupt you. They defy you. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Wow! What a scripture. I would like you to go back to that scripture. Jeremiah 23, 13 to 16. So look out for the fruit. Jesus said, And thou shalt know them by their fruit. Did he say, You shall know them by the accuracy of their prophecy? Prophecy can be accurate and source. Con, you know, contradictory. Thou shalt know them by their fruits and not by their acts and not by their charisma. So be careful who lays hands on you and who prophesies to you because you are a slave of whatever word you hear and you are the head to. Number eight. Number eight. Does the Holy Spirit within you bear witness that the prophecy is true? So I have touched on this. You must be able to have peace. Peace is the umpire for divine guidance. When you truly hear from God and through His servant, you will have peace. Please don't ever endeavor to do anything you don't have peace. When you lose your peace and you there is this burden or, or burden in your spirit, is a sign that something has gone amiss. Please don't do that. Check for in what condition? Check for peace. Peace, the umpire for divine guidance. And when that is done, you'll be in servants. Number nine. Do other godly leaders agree that the prophet is true? So I've talked on this. That must be confirmation that what they are saying is of God. Don't just get prophecy, you go on Facebook and all those things. You can do, you know. There are levels of maturity where your ministry has been accepted the body of Christ. Yes. I bet as you are growing, you don't just do this anyhow. First Corinthians 13, verse 1. The Bible says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Finally, on this episode, 
does the prophet will lead people to the Lord or away from him? What is the end product of the prophet's ministry? Are they Superman walking on the pulpit? Are they giving prophecies to make money and make matches out of the people? At the end of his ministration, did he call for altar call? Let me tell you this. Every gift of the Spirit is configured to lead men back to the heart of the loving Father. You know, one, one, one day, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they came to Jesus and they were asking Jesus for a sign. And Father, so that's it two times. And Jesus said, there is no sign that will be given to you except the sign of Judah. What is the sign of Jonah? Repentance. Repentance. Jonah, repentance. He was sent to preach repentance. A sinner, what a sinner needs is repentance. Repentance. So, thank God, preach the word of God. If prophecy come, give, demonstrate power, let lives be blessed. But make sure that the overall thing, it defies the people, confounds the people, and builds the people up. And let souls be one. When people leave your ministry as a prophet, may they take it a resolution to pray more, study more, live more holy, give to God, and become a soul winner. People should not leave your meeting and go to nightclub. People should not leave your meeting and they have their girlfriend to sleep with in the night. People should not leave your meeting and finish the, the, the two wraps of Igbo that is many, or one big bottle of gold in the fridge. When men of the Spirit speaks, there is a certain conviction that changes things. Jesus said, for the words and for your words to be truly prophetic, that word must be creative. In other words, that word must have capacity to effect change and back transformational possibilities in God. So this should be prophet as we are preparing at the end of the, 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 the beautifulness of gifts and the dimension. You pray that the hearts of men come on fire. You pray that people's spiritual fire is rekindled. You pray that yokes are broken. You pray that people should be better than you met them. That is the glory of the genuine prophetic ministry. So I want to encourage you today, as a believer, as a prophet, you see that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, or you are hearing from other external forces. Before I conclude, I want to read this scripture, Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 4. If there is among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof you spoke unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us have them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God will you. To know whether you have, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, so you shall walk after the God, the Lord your God, and fear Him and keep His commandment, obey His voice, and you shall serve Him. And what this scripture is saying, a prophet, a prophet can be accurate in gifting and false in doctrine. So the Bible is saying, in as much as the level of manifestation. But we should watch out on the end point of reconciling men, pointing men, setting men out of fire to pray, to catch a bottle of prayer and study. I would like you to take time and share these videos and uh, invite your friends and carefully uh, restudy what I've thought today. And you see that a new level of discernment, your spiritual eyes will be open and your ears will be sharpened to hear God. And before I tell you, I want to recommend this book, The Mandated Prophet. I wrote this book over 12, 13 years ago. I sit in three offices. I operate as a prophet, seer, a teacher, an apostle. These are the major mantles on me. To vendor the instrument mandate. Personally, I have a mandate to sit men on thrones, to rule for Jesus across the seven mountains. And the offices he has given to me to drive is, is number one, the prophet, seer a teacher and an apostle and my ministry is proven with a lot of results miracles signs and wonders but my most happiest moment is when i see sons who came to me having nothing tomorrow they are doing better manifesting the grace of god and they are conscious of heaven so i want to encourage you make your other online stores book for this book get it it will help you please share this video 
and the Lord bless you. I, I want to release a word of prayer. Father, I pray for my, my viewers. I ask that you baptize them with the unction for discernment. Father, from today, by the power of the Spirit, they will live for you. By the power of the Spirit, they should be able to discern when you are speaking and when you are not speaking. I, I pray over witchcraft manipulation over your mind. Uh, there is somebody watching me, you be hearing voices and you're confused which voice is speaking to you. Uh, this telecast will help you to be able to discern. One of the things about every voice from God speaks about the word and points men to God. So when you hear things that are contradictory to the ignorance of the scripture of God, find it. Paul said, let us cast down every imagination that resulted itself above the knowledge of Christ. I cast that spirit. You've been having nightmares in your dream. You've been dreaming of all man and having sex and all that. I break it today. There is a woman. You, you are watching me from Lagos. I, I release grace. May God release unction. Unction for conception. As you watch this telecast, let the seed be broken. Somebody, I see somebody whose leg is hanging. You had an accident about three months ago. I, I release the unction of God for your healing right now. And there is a woman I saw. People, your friends are, are, are telling you to, to write it for divorce because you caught your man with another woman. But the Lord said, don't do it. Forgive. That marriage will turn around again. I never release blessings of God. I, I, I see a young man who is saying, Lord, when shall it be my turn? Your ministry is not growing. You are somewhere in, in, in Benin, upper side. You are, you, are, you are watching this telecast. In fact, you wanted to go and submit to a, a certain prophet to God's power. But the Lord said, I am the Lord that will raise you. If you are humble and walk in my ways, the grace of God shall There is somebody here. As I'm teaching, you are crying and you are like, I used to operate in these giftings. But after I slept with that woman, but after I did something, it's like the gift of God was taken off me. I pray for restoration if you go back to God in repentance. May the Lord keep you, preserve you, till we meet sometime in the next episode. Please share this video, tell somebody about this meeting, and the Lord bless you. Keep shooting. God bless you. I am Bishop Boko Dlimanolese, the Chief Shepherd of Zion Eternal Branco Ministries. The Lord bless you as you keep connecting. God bless you. Bye-bye.